Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to the next part of my Render PC 2019. As you can see on my table, I decided to go for the Inwin 928 uh, aluminium tower, which is kind of a special case, and that's also the reason why I decided to go for this case. It's mainly designed for a Dominus Extreme or for this platform in general, because this platform is quite dif different um, compared to a normal ATX board. It's so much wider and uh, taller that it doesn't fit in so many cases. And Inwin mainly designed the 928 uh, for this platform. And yeah, I mean, it's 999 euros, which is quite a lot, but um, I think it's uh, special enough to fit into this uh, project. I didn't want to take any case that's um, too normal. And yeah, that's the reason why I went for it. A lot of people uh, wished to see the Corsair 1000D in this uh, build. I think Corsair also wished for it, but uh, no hard feelings. I just liked uh, the look of the 928 and that's the reason why I decided to go for this case. In today's video we will mainly um, do some adjustments on the case itself. We will remove all the fans, we will do some measurements because we're going to um, design a distro plate for this case. Um, it's going to fit in the bottom. It will be specially designed for us. The original plan was to laser cut and uh, build it ourselves, like glue it similar as, as we did it in Project Fox. Unfortunately, the laser cutter we have at Case King is broken and we will order it from Steel Key Customs. Sven, he's also kind of uh, becoming a friend uh, to me personally, um, being very close to him, uh, going back and forth with a lot of uh, feedback to his rec uh, recent work. And that's why I decided to kind of cooperate with him for this project. This means I will do some measurement. We will build the mainboard inside the case and we'll do the first fitting of the VGA, see how everything fits, then kind of check where we are going to align the reservoir and pump combination and then do the measurement. And finally, if everything works out, we will get a distro plate at the end of this video. First, let's remove the side panel. I already removed the other side and we won't need this until the build is finished. First step, remove all the stock fans. We have 12 fans in total that come from Inwin when you buy this case. And I think they should have just left the case without fans and maybe sell it for 200 euros uh, cheaper so you can get the own fans, the ones you like. So first step, remove them. I just removed the fans in the back, which was nice and easy, and then I figured out it's not so easy to remove the rest of the fans. We have uh, two radiator mounting places on top where we can fit two 420 radiators in total, which is also what we are going to use. Two 420 radiators from EK. So we have those radiator mounts, which will be used for the radiators in the end. And we also have those uh, dust filters on top, which I really dislike because they simply block the air and I mean it's pretty much an open frame case so why would you use uh, dust filters in there really doesn't make much sense. From my point of view we will try to remove those dust filters in a second. The thing is you can see that it's pretty much clean aluminium from this side and also from this side. There are no screws which are fixing the two aluminium sheets together so we kind of have to yeah, separate them from each other which we will do in a minute but what's really um, a little bit more of a problem is that the fans are mounted from yeah, the top side in here with screws. Same goes for the fans in the front and they are attached to the inner frame, which means we would have to completely disassemble the case and remove the inner frame to access the fans, which is really not nicely designed. But um, yeah, we will do that. I will do that in between the videos because that's uh, yeah, nothing nice to see in the video and just takes too much time. Let's get to the dust filters. All right, now I figured out how this is uh, connected. It's not glued. It's more like a rivet. So you see this part um, is a little bit wider than the rest of the hole. And it fits inside this countersunk hole on here. And it's the same on all the other parts, which means that if we use a drill and 
yeah, increase the size, uh, the diameter of the hole by like a millimeter, then we should be able to easily remove this plate. That was easy, I mean, could have been easier in the first place, but still fine. There are some marks now on the aluminium, which is not really an issue because the yeah, heads of the screws will kind of cover those spots, should be fine. So we can kind of put this piece back. Of course, we will also do the same thing on the other radiator shroud on the other side. I just saw that on this spot, the mainboard is colliding with the IO shield brackets. Not sure why it's doing that, but doesn't fit nicely. The screws are typically um, completely aligned right here, which is not the case. So we're just going to remove this piece. We don't need it anyway. We are going to build our own GPU holder. All right, here's the plan in general. You can see the Dominus Extreme with the water block mounted inside a case. The kind of special or unique thing about this water block is that the intake and outtake are very close together, but also not um, aligned symmetrically. So they're not um, placed like this or like this. They're kind of in a weird shape, which makes it a little bit difficult for our distro plate. Um, the General plan is that we will have a pump reservoir combination here on the right, which is also the entry and then it goes either into the CPU block first and then into the GPU or into the GPU first and then into the CPU and then back into the two radiators. Doesn't really make much difference. If there's enough flow speed inside the system, the component uh, temperature difference will not be that high. So either CPU or GPU will be like one or two degrees Celsius higher. Doesn't really make much of a difference. So the thing is we have this riser cable right here, which is included inside a case. It's made for the vertical mount. Typically it goes uh, right here and then into the first slot. My plan is not to use the first slot, but the third slot because I want to reserve the first and the second probably for add-on cards like network cards or like capture cards. That's why I want to keep the first two slots open. In result, I will move the riser cable a little bit in front so we have more space in the back and kind of squeeze it in here like this. And then we have our GPU, which we assembled in one of the previous videos that will sit right here. And now you can already see that um, the inlet and outlet of the water block is different to what we see here. So we have this kind of 45 degree angle thing here, uh, which will be a little bit of a challenge using two tubes. And um, I want to keep the same kind of shape also for the GPU block to give it a pretty similar look. So a lot of measurement work to do right now. And that's what I will do the next, I don't know, one or two hours. Quick draft for the start. We see the bottom plate right here. This is the basically inner and outer dimensions. We have the riser cable base plate here. This is inlet and outlet for the GPU, inlet outlet for the CPU, inlet and outlet for pump and reservoir combination. We have no water channels yet for the distro plate, just the points where the tubes will hit the distro plate. And I already have this piece cut in acrylic which we will now use to measure the final dimensions um, for the distro plate. Yeah, that's a good aspect of having one of those acrylic pieces first for like a first test before directly ordering the distro plate because I saw that I made some 
mistakes, I'm not sure if it was a mistake, but um, made some major adjustments. First, I had the two uh, water holes for the GPU, like rather in the back, but now I figured out I need much more space for the riser cable, so I have to move the riser cable additional 30 millimeters to the front, which is then resulting in the GPU holes to be completely in the front, like here. Otherwise, the yeah, water channels would collide here, because I also need an additional hole here in the back where the cables from the GPU can go through, then I will also need like a very big hole in the back right here for all the mainboard connectors like fans and uh, front panel connectors. The only thing that looked kind of correct was uh, the connectors for the pump and reservoir combination. So it's time to go back to the computer and do the final distro plate design in CAD. And this is how the distro plate will look like. Mostly. You can get an idea of how the water channels will look like, uh, starting right here from the pump reservoir combination going into the CPU here, then coming down from the CPU going into the GPU, then going from the GPU through this channel back to the radiators. We have the hole here for the cables, we have mounting holes for the GPU, also this small cutout for the IO shield of the GPU and here for uh, the cables that go to the mainboard. Um, I will send this to Sven from Steelkey Customs who is going to make the distro plate. The only thing that's missing is everything for the O-rings and like the, all the other uh, screw holes that need to be uh, placed in there. But he's going to take care of that. He will only get this file for me and then let's see how this looks like in a few days. And here it is, the distro plate from Steelkey Customs. Sven, thank you very much for uh, your nice work. I think it only took three days until it arrived here. He also has a ton of other um, stuff at his shop, so I will just link his work down below in case you're interested. I think we will also work on an O11 Dynamic XL distro plate uh, in cooperation with him. So there should be interesting stuff coming up. Really beautiful work here from Steelkey Customs. Yeah, I'm very impressed, especially the amount of time it took, only three days. It's really impressive, very nice water channels. And we also have a channel right here for an additional RGB strip. And here is the Derbauer RGB strip, addressable RGB. Really, this is no joke. I decided to make my own RGB strip because it's yeah, such a chaos with all those different strips and connectors. And then it's always a hassle because you don't know which um, strip with which adapter uh, to connect to which mainboard. That's why I decided to make my own stuff. And we will place two of them inside this channel. I think you can find them already at casing, I'm not sure. If they're available, I will put a link in the description, otherwise you will have to wait a little bit longer, but we'll put those strips inside these channels. Okay, I'm really curious how this distro plate will look inside the case. Next step is mount the riser cable. For that, I will need some standoffs. This through plate is sitting inside a case and I think it looks really beautiful, especially with those EK fittings here. I think it's going to be really nice. The GPU will get a lot of more stability once we have the two glass tubes going from the GPU into the distro plate. And for the cables, we have the hole in the back right here. So the cables will be in the end, this one goes behind the GPU and then all of them will exit the distro plate through the bottom. We still have to cut a hole through the aluminium down there with a the Dremel. Something we still have to do. Looks like everything was measured correctly on the first try. At least from what I can see right now. This tube aligns perfectly with this fitting. Same goes for the right one with this fitting. This looks perfectly in line. And also the tube on here which will then exit through the back uh, to the radiators. And the only thing we cannot check right now is the additional tube which will go into here from the pump. But the pump is kind of uh, modular when it goes to the, or flexible when it comes to the real position because we will just mount it on the back right here. If this doesn't fit, we will just move it a little bit to the left on the right. Should be fine. I will spend, I think, another day or two for the tubing on the system and also for aligning uh, reservoir and pump combination. I think you will see that in the next video. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye.